Today I am out at the Tosa Lakachi uh, Wildlife Management Area. I will put a link into the description where this place is located. I ended up buying a annual wildlife management permit. It's $28 with tax and essentially it gives you access to all wildlife management areas here in Florida. To all the bodies of water, to all the the places like the Osprey, not the Osprey unit, but the uh, Kolochi WMA, that it costs money uh, to fish uh, the northern unit. It gives you access to all those different places for a year uh, of date of purchase. Now, I'm out here, there's a little bit of construction going on because uh, this pond down here, they have a, a uh, fishing pier and it's currently under construction. I'm assuming this pond is pretty deep and uh, to be honest, I thought it'd be a nice quiet day and we'd be out in the middle of nowhere. This place literally is out in the middle of nowhere. It's off of 528. It's east of Orlando. And the nice thing about it is there's plenty of water to fish here. There's two man-made ponds that you can fish all the canals. There's some places uh, on the St. John's River that borders this place that you can actually go walk the riverbank where you can launch boats from there. Uh, the ponds that I'm fishing, you can fish anything, uh, any type of boat as long as it's not gas powered. And uh, the ponds are pretty big. It's gonna take me a, a, a good part of the morning to fish this one. I think this is Charlie Pond. Uh, the water here is dark. It is uh, tannic stained, probably from the trees. But I'm looking to catch some good fish here. Uh, there are, the, this place is nice. They do have a little boat ramp. They do have, there's shore access. Uh, the other thing is that there is plenty of room and it's quite a bit of a drive in from the entrance to get to this pond. This place, this place is huge. And they do have uh, bathroom facilities here too, which is nice. So don't have to worry too much about that. But I want to get started today. I've got a couple hours and I want to see if we can catch anything out here. I love fishing uh, state property, WMA stuff that's a little bit out of the way. Not, not the norm like the, your big uh, bodies of water around. I feel like there's a better chance to catch bigger fish here by doing this and it's a lot more peaceful and this is still public land you can still come and fish here it's totally accessible for the public uh, this place opens up at eight o'clock if you don't have a wildlife management permit it's uh, three dollars to enter or I think eight dollars per uh, a vehicle so let's get started and uh, see if you can't catch anything First thing I noticed is a lot of reeds, a lot of hyacinth uh, around here. So what I'm going to do is kind of work these edges. I really don't have the uh, the setup to do any type of punching. I do have some heavy set jigs and stuff, but I only have 14 pound fluorocarbon on. I'd much rather have 20 or even braid. There's tons of interesting little pockets here. So I need to get a feel for what this pond is like. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of paddle down here to the bigger portion. There are two small lobes on. I'm not really interested in those. Uh, I am seeing a lot of highs in though. So I'm assuming there's be fish pushed up in those. But I'm thinking about going down here to the other side, into the shaded area down here, while it's calm, and fishing that first. The water here is it's actually not too cold. It should be right at the right temperature. That's the way it feels that. Now as of right now if you want to come down here this fishing pier is available to fish off of it. Right now it's closed uh, until I think the 19th of this month because they're doing construction on it. It looks like they're putting in a new path and fixing a few things. So you want to keep that in mind when you visit down here. If you're just doing bank fishing you'll be kind of limited to the areas around uh, where you can park. There's certainly plenty of uh, bank fishing opportunity here and there are two ponds that you can fish plus you can go over to the St. John's River and walk the bank there. Now this might be best to visit this place in winter, uh, late fall, winter and uh, early spring uh, right up to early summer because there's some of the roads that go over creeks and they flood and there are water gauges to you know gauge how deep that water is. Spook something right there and something right there. Right over top of something. I'm hoping it was a turtle, not a gator.
big old stick. Oh, son of a gun. What is this? It's a bass. Turn around here. Get him over on this side. Of course, be tangled up in my own line. Why not? Come here. Finally, good hook set on this guy. Look how dark he is in color. Not very big. Really dark and car healthy though. Let's get him back in there. So I caught him off that, that tree right there. You can kind of see it's a nice little pocket there. I figured that's where it's something that can be sitting in there. That's more of a defined piece of cover. And then as I was untangling myself, there was a, a bass chasing out where I just threw. I think big or not. I was chasing some bait, he jumped. The splash wasn't very big, so I don't know if it was just a little fish or something bigger was chasing that fish. The good thing is uh, that guy hit it and he started running with it, so it's a, it's a good sign these fish are feeding and that they're hungry. They're not going to be lethargic. Today's going to be 80 degrees, so I don't see why they would be. When I started out at my house today, it was, uh, it was 59. When I got onto the road, it was about 70. And then when I got here, it's a little cooler. Obviously, we're away from, you know, the city, the pavement, all that stuff. So it was only 62 here. But I see these fishes, you know, kind of warming up and getting ready to, to feed. Got another one on right now. That's a better fish. Let's get him up here. There you go. That's a much better fish. Nice little two pounder. These fish are, of course, because the water is stained tannic acid from the trees and stuff, you know, fish are going to be dark in color. All right, let's get back in there. That's one on the Senko, and one on the Zoom electric blue worm. So both those fish came off of just changes in structure, so these reeds right here, let me show you, are just a little bit of a change in the, in the shoreline structure. That fish was in a little bit of a cutback underneath the tree. So anything that's kind of unique like that, I think I'm going to try focusing on and hitting. Because that seems to be, well, you know, I'm two for two on guessing that's where this fish would be at. So stuff like this would be great if I could punch it. But again, I don't have the setup to do it. I don't have, have enough line. But any place that seems to be like just a little bit of change in structure seems to be where these fish are hanging out. And it makes sense. Plus I'm on the shaded side right now. Helps out. I'm going to go ahead and leave the fluke on. In case I see any more fish chasing. Saw one, but that was it. Oh, that's better fish, I think. That's another good fish. No, not a monster. I'm too big to just flip in here. All right, get him off the hook so you guys can see him. I 
another big fit or not a big fish but it's healthy Another really dark bass. Nice and healthy though. So again, I'm just kind of picking my spots and we'll do some heist and, and uh, then there's some catty nine tails here. And I hit right there where the heist meets the catty nine tails and uh, it, as it came down, he grabbed it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they're pushed back up in the reeds. They're, they're hunting, they're feeding, this is good. I think these fish are all post spawn here. Not 100% sure, but um, they aren't super fat and they're feeding really aggressively. Oh, I missed one. Oh, I had a good one on. I missed him. Pop him back up just a little bit. Right in between that drill patch is where, where he was. I missed him. So this side is definitely not as productive as the shaded side was. You had one bite back in that corner. We're gonna make a run over to the island here. Give this a shot and see what's up. Actually, you know what? No, we're not. The, uh, the place I wanted to go, I started paddling towards and then I saw what looked to be like a 12 foot gator get into the water. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave him alone and we're gonna continue to fish his hedge over here. All right, left, you probably can't see it, but there's a bunch of these little heads popping out of the water. So if I go like this, these are all turtles. And that's, I think that's what spooked back there too. I don't think it was tilapia. I think it was turtles. They're all kind of just grouped up. I don't know if they're sunbathing or getting ready to mate or what. So this corner right here, this little pocket's protected from the wind. It's really, it's really shady under these edges here. Uh, that is a. Uh, it's not huge, but I'm also not super comfortable with in here. Okay, so when it comes to gators, I absolutely don't mind fishing around gators. When you're on the water and I've got you know a couple inches between me and them, it's a little bit different. Now, the reason why I'm not walking around these gators, even if you were at, uh, let's say, uh, Catfish Creek Preserve, where I get in the water and there's some gators around, that doesn't bother me as much. I can see them, it's super clear. This is tannic stained water, and on top of that, this is uh, this is out in the middle of nowhere where I'm assuming it doesn't get up, they don't see a lot of humans. And, you know, he's probably just freaked out like I am and getting in the water because he wants to get away, but I'm not gonna test that. And if, I've been around other gators who will swim off when they see you, um, where they freak out and they get in the water and they just go like, they beeline it away from you. If they're slow to get in the water like that and it looks like they might be trying to check you out, see what you are, they probably aren't gonna bother you. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, test that theory today. Okay, that's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna give you, uh, I'll give you the link to this WMA's website. I'll also give you the link to purchase a annual WMA uh, permit, which they're $28 after tax and they're good uh, from one year from the date of purchase. So it's beautiful out here. Definitely want to come back, uh, you know, in about a month or two when the, the spawn is completely off and these fish should be all grouped up and feeding heavily. A lot of big gators out here. There's one down there. I know there's one over here. I'm going to go ahead and keep fishing for just a little bit. I've got about 15 minutes before I really do need to get out of here. And then uh, if I catch anything, it'll be in the video. Otherwise, I'll leave you the links to those sites I mentioned in the description. 
and I'll catch you guys out on the next one. I'm hoping to get out. Uh, I had some SD card problems earlier this week, which kept me from posting anything that I had uh, from Lake Confusion. I think I'm going to go back to Lake Confusion here in the next week or so because it's looking nice. And it's a, it's a nice real little lake that's got, uh, you know, it's got some big fish in it. So I think I'm going to pack up and head out, and I will catch you guys in the next video.